You've never heard of Sandwich Day? Why, it's the most wonderful day of all. Once a year, the Teamsters go to this Italian sandwich shop in Brooklyn. No one knows what it's called or where it is. It's a Teamster secret. But they buy us these sandwiches. Oh, such sandwiches. And the dipping sauce. Oh, joy. God bless us, everyone. Mwah. Yeah! Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the Teamster Sandwich from 30 Rock, which has been rumored to be a fresh roast beef, roasted red peppers, and mozzarella sandwich from Fiore's in Hoboken, which means we've got to start by roasting us some beef. Since the dipping sauce, in this case made from drippings, is so essential to the success of this sandwich, I've decided to go with a standing rib roast, which I'm going to prep by removing from the bone. This is going to make it easier to carve later on. And now for both appearances and flavor absorption, we're going to score the beef. Simply make shallow cuts in a diamond pattern across the top fat cap of the roast. And now we've got to rub some steakhouse spices into it. We're going to grind together some dried rosemary and thyme. Normally we'd want to use fresh herbs, but we're trying to emulate cold cuts here. So go with the dried stuff and add some salt and freshly ground pepper. You could also optionally add some garlic powder and onion powder, but either way, mix the whole thing together and then start to rub it into your roast. Wear some black nitrile gloves to look cooler. You can find these on Amazon or in any tattoo shop, and evenly spread the spice mixture over all surfaces of your roast, even using the roast itself to mop up spices. Now, under any other circumstance, I would ask you to put this in the fridge for 24 hours to prevent juice loss, but in this case, we actually want to encourage a little bit of moisture loss. We'll get back to that later. For now, we're tying the roast back to the bones. The bones are going to serve as a sort of all-natural roasting rack. And there we go. We got ourselves some real prime rib in the making. Now, about that moisture loss, we want to encourage a little bit bit of drippings to come out of this thing because we want to make a sauce out of them. So we're preheating our oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, rubbing the roast down with a little bit of olive oil, and inserting a temperature probe into the thickest part of the roast, placing in the preheated oven for at least 25 minutes, then cranking the temperature down to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and continuing to cook until it reaches 115 degrees Fahrenheit internally. This is going to ensure that the roast develops a dark crust and also that it leaves some delicious drippings in the bottom of the the pan. Extradite your roast from the pan, cover with tin foil, and let rest while we make a sauce out of what remains. We get a little bit too much fat in the bottom of this pan, so we're going to pour off about half of it. We want to leave about a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup in the bottom of the pan and place it over medium high heat, adding a rounded tablespoon of all-purpose flour once it starts to sizzle. Whisk constantly for two to three minutes until the raw flour smell cooks off and you're left with a sort of toasted roux, and then add 32 ounces of high-quality beef stock. Emphasis on high quality, we're trying to emulate the drippings that come off huge joints of beef in a commercial preparation situation. Whisk frequently and boil down to your desired consistency. I want like a really, really thin grain. Gravy. And of course, we are seasoning to taste with salt and pepper. Meanwhile, 15 minutes later, our roast has elevated to 130 degrees Fahrenheit internally, aka perfect medium rare. So instead of having to hack it off the bones, we can just lift it off of our bone rack, and we are more immediately rewarded with rosy completion. It's okay to stare. Now, we can try and make sandwiches out of this, but it's so soft that we're going to have a hard time making very thin slices. So I'm going to chill this guy overnight, mostly so I have an excuse to eat a big, gory hunk of prime rib. Also, so I have time to head out to the actual Fiori's in Hoboken, New Jersey, and retrieve the actual elements from which this sandwich is birthed. Sorry, that sounded more appetizing in my head, but now we can be truly, deeply accurate in the recreation of this sandwich. First, we have Fiori's own in-house sandwich loaves, which I would just say are short baguettes, into which we're going to stuff a whole bunch of high-quality mozzarella, some roasted red peppers, which have been marinated with a metric f ton of crushed garlic, and Fiori's own roast beef, which I'm reheating in their gravy, which I'm going to stack high on this surprisingly slim sandwich loaf. Then we just gotta cut the whole thing in half to get a proper cross section, which we haven't had in a long time on this show. Ah, that feels good. And then of course we need a bowl of piping hot beef drippings, or as they're called on the show, dipping sauce, into which we can repeatedly deposit and retrieve the bitten end of our sandwich. And I gotta say, this is a really, really 
really good roast beef sandwich. A clean plate club member for sure. I don't know if my beef is gonna be able to hang, but I'm damn sure gonna try. Now that our roast is chilled out, it slices much easier into nice, thin, sandwich-appropriate slices. And then we've just gotta imitate the roasted red peppers, so we're just gonna take some jarred roasted red peppers and combine it with two or three massive cloves of crushed garlic. They do not skimp on the garlic, and neither should you. We're also gonna add a little splash of olive oil and season lightly with kosher salt. Mix them together, ideally let them sit for 24 hours in the fridge, or just serve them up if, like me, you're excited to see if your sandwich can hang out with the big boys. Layer up your cheese and peppers the same way, reheat your gravy from last night in a small saucepan, and one savory slice at a time, dip your beef into the boiling gravy. Has a more beautiful sentence ever been said? This might not be exactly how they make it at Fiore's, but it's emulating that sort of freshly roasted beef that we have a hard time recreating at home without a deli slicer. Anyway, this sandwich is looking pretty exactly the same as the genuine article. Let's see how it tastes. I gotta say, really, really good as well. The beauty of making this at home is that you can control the consistency of your gravy. You can choose whatever cut of beef you wanna roast. You can decide your own flavors and textures and you can enjoy it all off camera.